is 2001. We've hit a new era of gaming as we see releases like Halo Combat Evolved, Super Smash Bros. Melee, Grand Theft Auto 3, and on Sonic's end, with this game, you would be introduced to a beloved character that would be loved throughout the ages of Sonic, Shadow the Hedgehog. This is going to be a very long series I plan to be doing where I will be covering the history and progression of Shadow overall throughout the games and story, just in preparation with Sonic X Shadow Generations, just to have a look back at how his character evolved and how he evolved gameplay-wise. So, without further ado, let's begin with Adventure 2. Visiting the game, you have, what's interesting to find is you actually have two ways of being introduced to Shadow. The first being in the Heroes campaign, where after going into fighting Bigfoot, you see atop him is Shadow holding one of the Chaos Emeralds, and is the one responsible for framing Sonic for stealing the Chaos Emerald and for the actions on Prison Island. Contrast to how Sonic saw him, Eggman he broke all the way into Prison Island to find the research project that Gerald Robotnik, his grandfather, worked on 50 years ago. And once he finds it, he sees that it almost looks like Sonic, but is actually Shadow, and he's planning to grant him one wish. I did not know if we were trying to make more Dragon Ball references here. Just like in Sonic's campaign, we have to fight this machine again, but the difference is, it's called Hot Shot. But it still gets beaten. Pathetic human. This is where it gets crazier, so... Even after just playing him once in that boss fight, you don't get to play him at all until stage 4. So you have to do one Rouge stage, and then you have to play as Eggman again, and you just you have to wait four up to stage 4 just to play as Shadow. As we get to Shadow stage, we do see a glimpse of his backstory, as once he gets the first Chaos Emerald he stole, we then see him running with a young girl, Maria, and because of it, he made a promise. That promise? Revenge! And then we finally get his stage, Radical Highway. You probably notice, he doesn't play as different as he is compared to Sonic, as he has the same gameplay elements as Sonic does, with only one slight difference that I will talk about later. However, with Radical Highway, it's a lot more, I'd say, dramatic just with how it feels, because you have, like, explosions coming at you left and right. You just have uh, the airships coming at you, like, dang, <laughs> all this for a robbery? Dang. The best parts of the stage, though, are definitely the pole swinging on the exit signs and just grinding down the whole bridge, which is so much fun. After you do Radical Highway, you then have to wait up until stage <laughs> to play as Shadow again. Stage 9. Once you do you finally get up to that, you do also get to see what is on with the arc as Gerald was working on the Eclipse Cannon, as well as you do get to see when Shadow needed to save Rouge because she has the Chaos Emeralds and got herself trapped. You see him be a bit hesitant and to be on saving her or not, juggle when going through it again, it feels like it's such a fast-paced one, because even though you're on a timer, you just go through it so quickly, once you're just like going through each of like the rope swings. It's a very fast-paced one, which I replay a lot when I have downtime. Get the their rivalry fight, finally. After that sequence and getting escaping the island, we see another flashback as we see both Shadow interacting with Maria see, uh, as they're both wondering what life is like on the planet Earth. Then Eggman walks in and then Shadow tells him, no wait, never mind, wrong thing. After you go through the beta version of Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing with Rouge, you then get an exclusive stage that Shadow has in the Dark Story, which was Skyrail. Which is a really fun one with a lot of the grinding in this one, now, which I remember a lot of. Because you'd have a lot of grinding sections where you'd be traveling to different mountains back and forth. Just to get all the way um, down the stage. Because you would just be climbing up 
as well as bouncing on top of these uh, these bounce pad copters, I'd call them. Yeah, bounce pad copters, which I'm honestly surprised they didn't have for Sonic's rounds, especially because I feel like it blend just fine with the bounce bracelet that Sonic has. Topic of the bounce bracelet, let's actually talk about that, because that's the one power-up that Shadow did not receive, as both Sonic and Shadow had got the same amount of power-ups uh, after, after this point, but Sonic, because he had the Pyramid Cave and Crazy Gadget, he, was, he only had the bounce bracelet for those two routes, but the level required he needed them for it, and Shadow never had a route where he did that. Especially because the last time we play as him is the last stage for the Dark Story, as he finally discover, uncovers the truth on who he really is an agent, but has found secret info on who the Project Shadow really was, and that he may not be the ultimate life force, in which he really doesn't care because he only is focused on only one thing. Revenge. For his final stage, we get Final Chase, which it, I'd say I had a bit more fun with uh, than over Final Rush, mainly because of how you had to go pat through the the gravity cylinders, which were a bit interesting gameplay-wise. Because man, after a while, you're just like, what am I doing? on these platforms. I am glad to see though, for when people were showcasing the demo for it, that was one of the first stages you actually got to see. And of course, we get the final rivalry fight, where we do get to see Shadow utilize two of his abilities in action. If you already noticed, he already had Chaos Control. However, there was there's another ability, which is Chaos Spear, which you get hit with if you were from a far away distance from Shadow, which you would throw after a while, and you would Chaos Control if you got very far away from him. I do appreciate that they allowed you to use these battle abilities in the versus mode for the game, because of course, once you go through both campaigns, you get the final one, and you get to finally see the real truth of what Gerald was planning. I plan to give you a taste of my revenge once all the seven Chaos Emeralds are collected. Once I initiate this program, it cannot be disabled. All of you ungrateful humans who took everything away from me will feel my loss and despair. Then as we finally get to all of this info, we do get a look at Gerald's diary as to what Eggman saw in it. I don't quite know what happened or what went wrong. Was it a mistake to create the ultimate life form? My original projections. I was able to complete my project, Shadow. I designed its mind to be perfect, pure. I will leave everything to him. If you wish, release and awaken it if to the world. If you wish to fill the world with destruction, as everyone is working together, you probably already noticed that, yep, Shadow's just gonna let this happen. He's allowing everyone to perish at the hands of the Ark. Until so here, here's Amy's words. I know that people fight over the most trivial things. Some people may be selfish, like the professor said. Remember the true promise that Maria made to help give the people of Earth a better life. And thus, he shows up last second to fight the real prototype to the ultimate life form. The one that disappeared years ago. The hatred I had for this thing was unbelievable. Because I could not get past like the final part in which you had to hit him where he just levitates everything and you have to get all the way to the core to hit it one last time. I was younger. Not saying I can now, I can I would really do it when I was recording this up. Utilizing Chaos Control to help guide the art. And get the best team up since X-Men vs. Street Fighter. <laughs> With it defeated, both of them utilized Chaos Control to stop the Ark from approaching the Earth. That doesn't make it. Maria, this is what you wanted, right? This is my promise I made to you. 
he falls down to the earth, seemingly dying, honoring the wish that he made to Maria, giving everyone else on the planet another chance to live. And thus, we never saw him again. Gameplay-wise, I love how it's a lot more simple, like this, similar to just how Sonic plays action stages, which is all well, I love about the series, of course. And story overall, it's still like really, literally one of the best stories in the series imaginable. Because no, you can't just say like think of any other story in the series without bringing this up in particular. This next part in the legacy is gonna get very interesting. <laughs> oh.